there are two marks at play the mark of god and the mark of the beast yeah so therefore there's going to be something at play that shows who you are showing allegiance to What is the seal of God? So the first thing that we need to understand about the seal of God is this. Uh, let me go to Ephesians, right? If I could find Ephesians. There it is. Ephesians chapter 1. Mm -hmm. This is what a lot of people like to say. You know, they say, oh, the Holy Spirit is a seal. It has nothing to do with the Sabbath day. And the reason why is because of Ephesians 1.13. In whom also you also trusted. After that, you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also after that you believed. You were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, yeah, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. So you see, Jason, we already have the seal and the seal is you are being sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Right. And we accept this. We do believe this, you know, but let's look at it more closely in whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Right. So what did you do to get this seal? You trusted after you heard the truth right? You believed. When you become a believer, God is sealing you with the Holy Spirit of promise. Amen. Amen. But then look what he says about this Holy Spirit, which is the earnest of your inheritance. Come on, but what does that word earnest mean? What does it mean? G728. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Like there's uh -huh. definition. I think is good. And earnest, right? Yep. Money, which is, which in purchases is given as a pledge or a down, down payment, payment. Come on, preacher. that the full amount would subsequently be paid. Yeah. So what you get is a portion of the Holy Spirit, right? You know, Jesus had the full measure of the Holy Spirit on him. You can see that in John chapter three, it says God giveth him not the spirit by measure. But new believers, when you first believe the Holy Spirit is given to you, Ephesians chapter four, verse 30 also tells us who's giving us this seal. Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. The Holy yep. Spirit is sealing us. This is the work that the Holy Spirit is doing. So we don't disagree that God, the Holy Spirit is in you. He's working with you. We have that. That's what we got, right? Mm -hmm. We don't disagree. However, what we do understand is that the Bible speaks about other seals. That's not the only seal people get. What do you mean, Jason? There's only one seal. Well, okay, fine. You can believe that. But then how do you explain Romans chapter 4, verse 11, talking about Abraham? It says, and he received the sign of circumcision. A what? Seal of the righteousness of the faith. Come on now. A so seal. was was Abraham a believer? Yes. Did he have the Holy Spirit? Yes. No question. Of course. But he mm -hmm. received something else. He received the sign the of circumcision, a seal yeah. of the righteousness of the faith which he had yet being uncircumcised. Yeah. That he might be the father of all that believe, though they be not circumcised, that the righteousness might be imputed unto them also. Yeah. So he received another seal, a mark even. It was a physical mark in this case, but he mm -hmm. received the mark, a sign, a seal of circumcision. That shows mm -hmm. the that that was showing the the inward thing that was happening to him, right? And how do we understand this? That there are other seals. Isaiah chapter eight verse sixteen says this: Bind up the testimony and do what? Seal the law. Yeah, yeah. Seal the law. So now we also have the law being sealed. But who is the law being sealed? among disciples my disciples wait a second wait a second wait a second before you know jesus are you a disciple no no when you first believe in jesus christ are you a disciple yeah yeah you become one you become one mm -hmm. but if you're considered a disciple what does that imply that yeah, you have the holy spirit yeah. mm -hmm. that you already have the holy spirit yeah so you're receiving this seal, bind up the testimony, seal the law among my disciples. You're already a disciple and you're having the law being sealed on you. So you can see, even though you may have that initial Holy Spirit, something else is being sealed on you. The Bible says the law is being sealed on you, right? Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's a lot of other definitions. I mean, uh, points of view that I can give you or examples I can give you. But look at this. Exodus chapter 31. Look at this. Mm -hmm. Exodus 31 verse 13 says this, speak unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbath you shall keep, for it is a what? 
sign. A sign. Now, when we understand this word, just so that we all are on the same page as far as definitions, right? It shall be a sign. H226. When you see the word sign, right? This, uh, it's the same word for signal. It's the oath, right? It basically mark. means mark, right? Mm -hmm. And we understand, uh, uh, what was it? Abraham, he received that same sign, right? These mm -hmm. are words that are that are interchangeable. I just want to make sure that yep. we're all on the same page of this. So when you see yeah. sign, seal, mark, they're all interchangeable mm -hmm. words. He received mm -hmm. the sign of circumcision. It's that same idea, that same word, you know, mark, token, sign. Like these are all synonyms of each other. He received mm -hmm. the sign of circumcision, a seal. Yeah. So sign, seal, mark, all interchangeable words so that we're all yeah. on the same page when I read these verses. Yeah. So notice that this is what the Bible is saying. Exodus chapter 31, 13. Speaking to the children of Israel, verily my Sabbath shall you keep for it is a sign. I mean, this is where it should just end right there because this is a seal, a sign. Between me and you throughout your generations that you may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant, right? So all of this is a sign for God's people. Um, but now, when we go to Revelation, Revelation chapter 7, look at what's happening in Revelation chapter 7. After mm -hmm. these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having what? The seal of the living God. Come on, Bridget. Come Let me on. pause right there. People are saying the seal is the Holy Spirit. Are you guys telling me that an angel is holding the Holy Spirit in his hand? Does that make sense? That doesn't make any sense. So this has to be different. Come on, and I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, hurt not the earth, till, nor the seas, nor the trees, till we have sealed who? The servants. the servants of our God. The servants of our God. So these people are already serving God and they need to be sealed. Um, Deontay, did you want to say, speak on this real quick? Yeah, I I definitely did want to speak on this because we also have to we also have to look at what does it mean to be a servant of God. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Ephesians chapter six, um, verse five. It says, "Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters, according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, in singleness of your heart, as unto Christ, not with eye service." as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ doing the will of God from the heart with Ooh. good, with good will doing service, service. So your servant, right? As mm -hmm. to the Lord. And so what not, we see here is that servants of Christ, if you are already a servant of Christ, you're already doing, doing the will, the of, will. God. Oh. You're doing the heart. will of God. You're already doing the will of God. But now here's the question. How do we do the will of God or what empowers us to do the will of God? Let's go to first Peter chapter one mm -hmm. and verse two. It says, elect according to the foreknowledge of God, the father do sanctification of the spirit. But what does the spirit sanctify you to do? Onto obedience. obedience. So can we be servants of God without the Holy Spirit? No way. No so then in Revelation, when it called them servants of God, doesn't that mean that they were obedient to God? And in order to be obedient to God, you must have the Holy Spirit. Yep. And in Ezekiel chapter uh, 36, verse 27, it says something similar. Mm -hmm. It says, and I will put my spirit within you and cause you. So who's the one that causes us to walk in God's statutes? Holy Spirit. Spirit. Spirit of God. It's the Holy Spirit. On, and now notice that this is Old Testament language. Mm -hmm. So isn't it true that the Holy Spirit existed in the Old Testament as well? That he was there in the Old Testament? Absolutely. Now, if the Holy Spirit was there in the Old Testament and he functions in the same way as he does in the New Testament, doesn't that mean that the Holy Spirit sealed people in the Old Testament as well? Doesn't that mean that he sealed people in the Old Testament? He definitely did, mm -hmm. right? And now, what does the Bible say in the same exact book? What does the Bible say is a sign? 
another sign. We know that the Holy Spirit is a seal in Ezekiel 36, 27, because he's the one that causes you to become a servant. Yeah. But then in also in Ezekiel 20, verse 12, mm -hmm. what does the Bible say? What verse? Ezekiel 27, verse 12? 20, verse no, 12. Ezekiel 20, verse 12. 20, verse 12. Mm -hmm. Moreover, I gave them my Sabbath to be a sign. Come on. Seal. So in the same exact book, in Ezekiel 36, verse 27, it says that the Holy Spirit causes you to walk in the keeping of the commandments of God and of the statutes of the Lord. And we understand that the Holy Spirit has to seal you in order to do that. So in Ezekiel 36, 27, it speaks about one seal. But in Ezekiel 20, verse 12, it speaks about another. Mm -hmm. Moreover, I gave them my Sabbaths to be a seal or a sign between me and them that they may know that I am the Lord that sanctify them. Amen. 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 That's, that's, that's so, all uh, I have to say. Oh, and <laughs> let me just add one more thing. One more thing. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3. Okay. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3. It says, Wherefore I give you, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus cursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord, but by who? The Holy Ghost. By the Holy Ghost. So, in other words, and this just blew my mind the other day. In other words, you cannot believe in the heart that Jesus Christ is Lord without the Holy Ghost. Mm. So the very fact, so number one, you cannot believe that in Jesus without the Holy Ghost, and you cannot obey Jesus without the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And we see in Revelation, and we see elsewhere in Scripture, that people believed in Jesus, in Revelation, that they had belief in Jesus, and they were obedient to Christ as well. Yet still, they received another sign. Mm -hmm. And that sign was the Sabbath day. Amen. All right. So now I'm going to go a little bit deeper, but thank you. I think that was very important that we need to understand that in the last days, the servants of our God are being sealed, right? Yeah. Now let's go a little bit in deeper so we can get the context of what's happening in these last days. When you look at Revelation chapter six, all of this is happening under the sixth seal, right? It says yeah. uh, in verse 12, and I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal and lo, there was a great earthquake and the sun became black, etc. right? You fast forward, other events happen under the sixth seal. And then it says this, and the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens in the rocks of the mountains mm -hmm. and said to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sit upon the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. Come on. For the great day of his wrath is come. Question, mm -hmm. and who shall be able to stand? Mm -hmm. So this is the setup for the seal of God. Mm -hmm. The great day of his wrath is coming. Who is able to stand? There were no chapters in the book of Revelation. So the answer is the 144,000. And after those things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that, is sh that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, until mm -hmm. we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed 144,000 of all the tribes of who? Children of Israel. The children of Israel? Mm -hmm. I thought the Sabbath was just for Israel. Well, guess what? You're right. We're all, we're all Israel. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. These people are called the children of Israel. So guess what they have? Guess what commandment they're keeping? The seventh day Sabbath. Going with your own words, the Sabbath is only for the Jews. Well, these people are called the 144,000 of the children of Israel. Now, we already understand that when you're in Christ, you're a part of this. You can be a part of this number, this 144,000, right? But now I want to explain to you, we already understand that they were servants. They were already obedient to God, as Deontay well said. What was the characteristics of the 144,000? No guile. The character. Huh? There's no guile. No well, let's look what it says. It says this. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Sinai, and with him 144,000. They have this father's name written in their foreheads. First thing that we understand about the 144,000 is that they have the father's name written in their foreheads. Yep. What is the father's name? Character. How do we know that? 
Well, because Randy said so. Oh, no. <laughs> you learned that in Exodus chapter 34, verse 5, it says, And the Lord descended yep. upon the cloud in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed and the, name, the of name of the Lord. And what does God say his name is? It says, And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the, the Lord, Lord, the Lord, Lord God. God, merciful and gracious, long suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if they're having this father's mm -hmm. character, they're also going to be abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, upon the children's children until the third and fourth generation. When they have their father's name written in them on their foreheads, they have the character of God. Come on, preacher. Mm -hmm. right? But what else is it about these 144,000? It goes on to say in verse four, four and five, it four. says, these are they which are not defiled with women, for they are virgins, right? They're pure. These are they which follow the lamb whithersoever he goes. They understand where the lamb is, who's in the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the lamb. And in their mouth was found no gal. No gal. There you go. For they are without fault before the throne of God. Yeah, yeah. So if you're going to be a part of this 144,000 who's getting this seal, these are servants that have no gal in them. Yep. These are people that already know God very, very well. Amen, keyboard. Amen. So now Amen. I'm, coming, I'm coming to my conclusion. Why do we say this is the Sabbath? Let me explain something to you. All right, break it down, brother. Let me explain something to you. When we see that this angel has the seal of the living God, clearly he can't be holding the Holy Spirit. So what he has is something to mark with, right? Mm -hmm. We understand that this is a scenario that happened in another place of the Bible. Mm -hmm. you remember where this similar scenario had? Did where you know? it was like the situation was the, the day of God Almighty, the wrath was about to come, but these people needed to be protected. And so they needed mm -hmm. to be sealed in order to be protected. In Does Ezekiel? Familiar? Nine. Exactly. When we look in Ezekiel chapter 9, this is what it says in Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 3. And the glory of God of Israel was gone up from the cherub, whereupon he was, to the threshold of the house. And he called the man clothed with linen, which had the writer's inkhorn by his side. Mm -hmm. So he has something to write with. And the Lord said unto him, go through the midst of the city, throughout the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark, or seal, mm -hmm. upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and mm -hmm. that cry for Come all on. the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Come on. Right? So now these are believers. These are people that already have the Holy Spirit. They're getting another kind of seal. And to the others, he said in my hearing, go ye after him through the city and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have pity. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women. But come not near any man upon whom is the mark and begin at my sanctuary. Then they began at the ancient men, which were before the house. Yeah. This was a situation. Men of God, people of God were sighing and crying. And God's saying, put a mark on them. Yep. They already had the seal. These are already believers. God is putting another seal on them for and this scenario to mark them, to protect them. Mm -hmm. But when you look at Revelation chapter 6 and 7, mm -hmm. who shall be able to stand? Hurt not the earth until we have sealed our servants. It's a mark of protection. God has a specific seal to mark people that stands them out as his. God has a very specific seal. What does that have to do with the Sabbath? Jeremiah chapter 22, verse 24 says this, so that we're all clear on what a seal entails. God says this, as I live, saith the Lord. This is God talking. Though Kaniah, Kaniah is a person's name, the son of Jehoiakim, right? That's his name. Those Jehoiakim, the son of Jehoiakim, king, that's his title, title of Judah, territory. that's his territory. Though Kaniah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, were the signet upon my right hand, yet I would pluck thee thence. What we see here, what God is calling a signet, when we look at that word signet, H2368, it says this, Kotham, a signature. Oh, look, a seal. Mm -hmm. What is the seal of God? Well, let's see what he says. God says a seal has three distinct things on it. The name of the person, Kaniah in this case, the title of the person, 
king in this case, the territory of the person, Judah. The seal that God is talking about is a seal that has the name, title, and territory. Is there something in the Bible that tells us the name, title, and territory of God? Yep. What is it? Fourth commandment. The fourth commandment. The fourth commandment. Exodus chapter 20, verse 11. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth and the sea and all them that in uh, that in I'm sorry, let me read this right. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day. Right? This is the commandment that says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. But if we understand what's in verse 11, it says, for in six days, the Lord. What is that? That's the name. The name. Made. What does that imply? The title. Title. Right? And heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is? What is that? Territory. 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 So therefore, what God is telling us is that his seal, and the thing that points his seal, that has a name, title, and territory, is the Sabbath commandment. Amen. Why is this important? Because as Deontay had showed earlier, when you have the Sabbath, you're showing something about God. When you have the Sabbath, you're showing everything about God as far as your relationship. Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 12, once again. Moreover, I gave them my Sabbaths to be a sign, a seal between me and them. What does this seal mean? That they might know that I am the Lord that does what? Sanctify them. So when you're keeping this seal of God, you are saying God is the one sanctifying me. People would say, oh, just because you go to church on Saturday means you have the seal of God. No, because the 144,000 are without blame, without blemish. No, the 144,000 are completely sanctified. Mm -hmm. When you have this seal, it's showing that God is the one that is sanctifying you, which mm -hmm. means you keep all of his commandments. Yeah. As a matter of fact, look at this. Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 19. Yeah. I am the Lord your God. When you have his seal, you're saying he's the Lord my God. He says this, I am the Lord your God. Walk in my statutes and keep my judgments and do them and hollow my Sabbaths. Yep. And they shall be a sign between me and you. Why? That you may know that I am the Lord your God. Come on, preacher, come on. If you want to know who your God is, he is saying, Keep my Sabbaths as a sign between me and you that you know I am the Lord your God. You want to talk about the Father's name? How can you say he's the Lord your God and you have his name if you're not having the very thing that's a sign that shows that he is the Lord your God? So when we say that the Sabbath is the seal of God, it's the sign that shows that he is the Lord your God that's sanctifying you. It's the one that really shows that you belong to him. Mm -hmm. Very, very briefly, I'm going to end with this. When you see in the book of Revelation, there are two types of people. There are the 144,000, and then there are those who Revelation 14, verse 9 talks about. It says, in the third angel followed him, saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast Come on. and his image and receive his mark in his forehead yep. or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his ignition. There are two marks at play, the mark of God and the mark of the beast. Yeah. So therefore, there's going to be something at play that shows who you are showing allegiance to. The third angel's message ends with this. Here is the patience of the saints. What is that identifying mark or the distinguishing mark? Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith, and the faith of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be an identifying mark that shows you belong to the beast. Yeah. And there's going to be an identifying mark that shows you belong to God. God says, my Sabbath is the sign that you belong to me, that yep. I am sanctifying you, that I am the Lord, your God. So yep. therefore, there has to be another counterfeit mark that shows you belong to the beast. Yep. Let's be real about this, y'all. Mm. Who has a problem with nine commandments? Nobody. Nobody. Nobody has a problem with thou should have no other gods before me. Nobody has a problem with bowing down to graven idols or whatever. Uh, don't take God's name in vain. Nobody has a problem with honor your father and mother. Don't kill. Don't steal. These are civil laws that we all have in all our governments. Don't covet uh, your neighbor's things. You know, don't commit adultery. Nobody has real issues with this. 
Look, what is the one distinguishing commandment that everybody's having an issue with? The one that shows that you were a part of Israel. Mm -hmm. The one that God said to remember. They always, they, they reject. The one commandment that everybody's saying is only for Israel. And by the way, the 144,000 is Israel. So what is that distinguishing mark? It's 930, guys. So let me finish in 10 minutes. <laughs> Wow. This is the last thing because I want to really thoroughly answer this question. Yeah. My name is Randy tonight. Keep cooking, bro. Nice to meet you. Cooking. Let that, let that marinate. Go ahead, bro. This is the last point. I promise we'll be done in, <laughs> in 10 minutes. I promise. <laughs> For sure. In the last days, there is the mark of the beast. Mm -hmm. What is the mark of the beast? If you haven't seen last week's video, we thoroughly talked about the mark of the beast. So I'm not going to thoroughly talk about the mark of the beast. But the mark of the beast is. The mark, the mark of the beast. Wow, that was right. That was genius, brother. Genius. <laughs> he said, "Sunday worship yes. will be the mark of the beast." This is what Ellen White says, and the Sabbath is the seal of God. Yes, the Sabbath is the seal of God. It's mm. a stamp. It's a signet. That's a signature. That points him out as a creator. Yes, that is the seal. This is not to say we're not sealed with the Holy Spirit, but no, the stamp that shows you belong to God is the Sabbath. But what is the mark of the beast? The mark of the beast is the mark of the beast. Or rather, it's the mark that belongs to the beast. Yes, right? Exactly. So therefore, if you know who the beast is, then you can find out what their mark is. Just to be very, very brief, the mark of the beast is the mark that belongs to the beast. In order to really know what the mark is, people are trying to figure out what the mark is without even knowing who the beast is. Mm -hmm. Find out who the beast mm -hmm. is first, right? Yeah, and so right. where is beast mentioned in the Bible? We get this yeah. from Revelation chapter 13. I stood on the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven horn heads and ten horns, and upon his ho horns, ten crowns, and upon his heads, the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, his feet were as a bear, his mouth as the mouth of a lion, yeah. and the dragon gave him his power, his seat, and great authority. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. The beast is a combination of a leopard, a bear, and a lion. And the dragon gives him his power. The dragon is the devil, y'all. Revelation 12, verse 9. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the question is. What does the lion, bear, and, and leopard represent? When you study Daniel chapter 7, and we're not going to do that now, watch the previous video. There'll be a link in the description on some other videos you can see. But when you really study it, the Bible tells us these great beasts, which are four, are four kings, oh. four kingdoms, oh. which shall arise out of the earth, because a king has a kingdom. Yeah. And last week we discovered the Babylon is the lion, Greece is the leopard, Rome is the last hideous beast, Medo-Persia, that was the bear. Rome is the one that were, is the big issue. Okay? Mm -hmm. So those are the four kingdoms. What comes next? Well, in Rome, there's this thing called the little horn. This is the one that's doing all the dirty work. I would know the truth of the fourth beast, which was diverse from all the others, exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were of iron, his nail of brass, which devoured, break in pieces, and stamped the residue with his feet. Yep. And of the ten horns that were in his head, and of the other which came up before whom three fell, even of that horn that had great eyes and a mouse that spake great things, whose look was more stout than his fellows. I beheld in the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them. Until the Ancient of Days came and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High, and the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. People like to say the mark of the beast was in the first century. How can the mark of the beast be in the first century if this is talking about a time when God is judging and the saints of God is possessing the kingdom? This is a last day situation for mark. our preterists is that what it's called people who believe that everything happened in the past no it's not yeah. true thus he said the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth yeah. Rome, which shall be diverse from all the kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth tread it down and break it in pieces and the ten horns out of this kingdom are the ten kings that shall arise and another shall Shut arise up. after them and he shall be diverse from the first and shall subdue three, three kings, kings. Yeah. we understand rome was divided in ten parts it's on your screen pause to see and then, which kingdom plucked up the three kingdoms in Rome? The papacy. So when we're talking about the mark of the beast, we're talking about the mark of the papacy. Everything points to the papacy. When you see the papacy uprooted Heruli, Vandals, and Ostrogoths. The papacy. What would the papacy do? And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given to his hand unto a time, times, and dividing of times. Mm -hmm. how, did he think, how did he speak uh, great words against the Most High? This is what the papacy says. 
This judicial authority will even include, oh, sorry, include the power to forgive sins. Again, this is review. The Pope says, I can forgive your sins. Only God can do that. The Pope and God are the same. Hmm. So he has all power in heaven and earth. Yeah, right. Blasphemy. Right. The Pope is of so great authority and power that he can modify, explain, or interpret even divine laws. He can change God's laws. Blasphemy. Sunday is purely a creation of the Catholic Church. This is what that. Said. This is how he thinks to change times and laws. If Protestants would follow the Bible, they should worship God on the Sabbath day. By God, it's wow. Saturday. In keeping the Sunday, they are following a law of the Catholic Church. The beast is telling you very straight our mark versus God's mark. He's telling you God's authority means keep the Sabbath. Saturday. When we talk about how he um, ruled for a time, times, and dividing of time, we understand that a time, times, dividing of time is 1260 years, mm -hmm. right? Because a time is a year, three and a half years. Time, times, times would mean two years. Half a time is a half of a year. So three and a half years. One plus two plus a half is three and a half. When you break that down using a, you know, that, that equals to 1260 days. But if you use a day for the year prophecy principle, day for a year principle, you'll see that exactly 1260 years from 538 when the Pope started ruling to 1798 yeah that was their reign before he received the deadly wound mm -hmm. as a matter of fact people in the comment section before were saying how did we come to um 300 and 1260 because they say if you times three and a half years which is 366 days you'll come up with like 1266 days or something like that i forgot the exact math let me just break that down real quick 1260 days how did we come up with 1260 days this is how we come up with 1260 days in the 600th year of noah's life in the second month the 17th day of the month the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were opened. So notice the time frame we're dealing with. In the story of Noah's Ark, he went in the second month, the 17th day. What month? Second month. Second, second month. month. Cool. And the wars prevailed on the earth how many days? 150. Right. 150 days. And the wars returned from off the earth continually after the end of the 150 days, the waters were abated. And the ark rested in the seventh, seventh month. month on the 17th day to the day. So now let me ask you this question. He went in on the second month mm -hmm. and he came out on the seventh month. How many months is that from the second to the seventh? Five months. So he was in there five months. But the Bible is saying five months was 150 days. So it's just simply oh, simple math. Yeah. If five months is 150 days, that means 30 days per month. Mm -hmm. This is how we come to the biblical understanding on, of 1260. Come on, a, a month is 30 come on. days. Come Just on. from the Bible alone. That Don't good. use the Gregorian calendar to calculate this. From come the on, Bible's bro. point of view, a month is 30 days on, by bro. simple math in the story of Noah. Come so on. therefore, 30 days per month times 42 months is 40, 1260 days. Simple. So when we talk about the beast ruling for 1260, that's how we get that calculation. What is the mark of the papacy? This is the last thing I'm going to talk about. And then we're all going home. I mean... You know, Sunday is our mark of authority. The church is above the Bible, and this transference of Sabbath observance is proof of that fact. The holy day, the Sabbath, was changed from Saturday to Sunday, not from any directions noted in scriptures, but from the church's sense of its own power. People who think that the scriptures should be the sole authority should logically become Seventh day Adventists. Looking here. Keep Saturday. Holy, I'm done. I, I want to hopefully that answers that question about the seal of God and the mark of the beast. I took 12 minutes, so that was a lot better time than last time. But <laughs> let me just finish this point. God's oh, seal, especially in the last out, days, huh? you're yeah. going to have His Sabbath as a distinguishing Absolutely. mark. Absolutely, between mm -hmm. His people and Absolutely. the people that worship the beast. Sunday yeah. is their distinguishing mark that says they're your ruler. The Sabbath is God's distinguishing mark that shows he's your ruler. Right. That's what it says in Ezekiel 20, verse 19 and 20. 